Yeah, me and uh, three other guys have been thinking about this for a while. Huge. It's huge to see, um, you know, the community started out really small. I mean, I've been doing this now for probably about, you know, 14 years. What it is, what it do, welcome to Fresh Take. We're down here at the first ever sneaker convention. We're about to go inside the Chinese Cultural Center and check out all the vendors, the traders, and what they got. But first, the one question I'm gonna be asking is the history of people's Jordans and their sneakers. And mine, I started off with the Jordan Mocha 3s from a man, Jermaine. We'll see him inside. He's got a whole bunch of nice shoes that will show off, as do other people. And uh, the one shoe that's kind of been excluding me my whole life, another thing we're gonna bring up is those Jordan grapes. I had them and I just, uh, still haunt me to this day that I didn't get them. But we got a lot of exciting things going inside. I'm getting super excited. So Fresh Take followers, let's go inside. Let's meet some of the founders to the Sneaker Expo. Yeah, me and uh, three other guys have been thinking about this for a while, trying to put together uh, a sneaker event that can bring the whole community together. And uh, this is it, first time. Well, we've had months and months of just meetings, trying to get vendors, trying to sell tickets, do all that stuff. Um, but it was just kind of all getting our heads together, um, renting out the venue, getting, making sure everything's in place, um, getting a whole bunch of vendors, businesses, local people, and just reaching out on Facebook, Twitter, social media. Well, we had a Facebook group uh, a few years ago. We started online. We just wanted to see, you know, get all the traders and buyers, sellers together. 100, 200, 300, 400 members, 1,000 members, up to uh, 3,500 members right now. And so for us, it was all viral. And then we said about a year ago, why not do a conference? You know, a convention to get all these people together. And then we've been meeting two times a month to get this together. Big time, yeah. Just having the YYC Soldiers group kind of gave everybody a place to communicate in Calgary about what's going on. And after seeing the, the population grow online, we just it was a no-brainer to pull an event together. YYC Soldier movement, but what we really wanted was, YYC Soldier is the place where you meet online, but this is open to anybody. We want here that are people here that are collectors. We want dudes that like love Jordan when they were kids and like are rediscovering it. And we want kids. Kids who are coming here and getting their first basketball sneaker. That's what we want. As the masses flow in, the founders couldn't be more excited. It's uh, blowing up right now. We did not know what it was going to look like. And, uh, you know, we had one table for a long time signed up. Okay. And then the table started rolling in, and we're here now. We're in the mix of it. It's huge. It's huge to see, um, you know, the community started out really small. I mean, I've been doing this now for probably about, you know, 14 years, and I started real young. So to see it from, you know, grow from such a grassroots thing, which essentially it still might be to something like this today where we can have, you know, um, you know, hundreds of people in here today, you know, all sharing the same passion is really special to be a part of. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of speechless right now, you know, like, um, this is something that we, me and Andrew have been planning for the last two years and then we picked up Adam and Drew and you know like this is, this is what's going on right now so I'm kind of speechless to see what's going on with everyone. This isn't just sneakers, this is the culture. I love it personally because like urban stuff is not really in Calgary as much as it should be. No. So to see all this urban youth and stuff out here getting, getting their sneaker on with the Jordans and all the other sneakers out here, it's really good to see man, I, I love it personally, yeah. Yeah, I think like people say, you know, the Vancouver's, the Toronto's of Canada, that's where the urban culture lives, but it exists in Calgary. And I think right now in Calgary, the really cool thing is that we are a city that recognizes the Stampede is, a, is an institution. But what else can we be? We can be so many things. And rather than saying that Toronto's better, let's step up here and make Calgary the best it can be. Yeah, yeah. Um... I kind of didn't like the term anymore of a subculture, so I wanted to create a culture with, with, with everyone here. So it's honestly, um, shout out to everyone that's here because if it wasn't for them, there would be no culture. There were more than just sneakers for people to check out. Sure, yeah. Um, 
basically we, we have a, an array of bow ties and, uh, and hair clips and scrunchies for girls. Um, the bow ties are for girls uh, and boys, men and women. Um, but yeah, I don't know, they're, they're just made out of a whole a bunch of different material. Each one's unique, uh, sort of to suit the person who chooses it. Oh, definitely because the crowd that's coming here today is the crowd that is into really sneakers, hats and t-shirts. It's a perfect pairing. It always goes well together. So we wanted to just show a little bit of the, some of the hats that are not so easy to find, some of the more exclusive hats. We just wanted to come and present that. Um, probably contacting us by email. We have an email address set up, so just sending us an email saying that you're interested. You can see photos of our products on uh, Facebook or on our website. Um, but yeah, our email is probably just the best way to get in touch if you want, like, uh, have an order in mind. Like, we have weddings coming up that we're doing ties for. So yeah, it's just stuff like that. You can hop in, come check us out at 1611 14th Street, Southwest. We're just right there at the intersection of 17th Avenue and 14th Street can't miss us. There's a lot of uh, cleaner stuff as well, cut and sew button shirts and jackets. It's, uh, we have the funky colorful stuff, but we also have kind of some reserved stuff as well. To track down some sneakers, you sometimes have to be creative. Oh man, you uh, you named the, uh, the way to get it? I've gotten them like that, whether it be internet, Calgary stores, uh, places in the U.S., every, every possible outlet to get them, I've gotten them at. So. Yeah, like I travel a little bit, like when I go on vacation, anywhere I go, um, I'm always going to a sneaker shop, making sure maybe they don't have, maybe have something crazy there, something for a really good price that I can just pick up. Um, I've got stuff from like all over the States, Miami, Seattle, everywhere, in Europe, these ones, these ones I got uh, in Switzerland. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, when I was backpacking Europe. So spanning the globes for yeah, sneakers. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone has that first pair of kicks. Oh man, I would say the Jordan 13s yeah, because I grew up playing in those back in high school, if you remember. Yeah, I do. But um, we went to high school, everybody, if we you, you want to know. And college. And college. Um, but yeah, the Jordan 13s were like my favorite of all time. Well, when we're talking Air Jordans, the 11 is definitely my yeah, favorite. You've got them on the feet. That's right, I've got them on the feet today, and I've got a pair here as well. Got the uh, the low here, Zane Gray's from uh, 2001. So I would say the 11s, but I'm a huge Nike basketball guy. Yeah. I, uh, I grew up with Nike basketball. That's what got me into Air Jordan was the first place for Nike basketball. So we've got a lot of the stuff here that really speaks to my childhood. Is that Nike basketball? Yeah. Randy Ford. I'm gonna go two here. Oh, and I'm gonna really? say two. the Jordan 11s. Yeah. No, I'm gonna say two shoes. Okay. Jordan 11s are my favorite. Yeah. That's everybody's favorite. That's everyone's favorite, It's yeah. a patent leather, yeah. Yeah. but it's amazing. But the second one's gonna be the 2011s. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually inspired after the 11. Yeah. Um, but it's a unique take on it. Like, it's still got the sort of patent, not patent, but it has like a toe cap the same. And uh, it's a very similar shoe, super comfortable, great to ball in. It's an awesome shoe. Um. The sneaker that started for me was a pair of 2005 Air Jordan 13 Lows. Uh, my pops actually bought them for me. They're my first ever retros. I graduated uh, grade nine, and they're a graduation present from them. Uh, the one that got me to this level was the 2001 True Blue Threes. Uh, my buddy Jermaine over there, who's got a table, he kind of put the bird in my ear, and then from there it just kind of festered and grew. Yeah, you know. He, he kind of does that. He did that he to me that. as well. So <laughs> um, he's one of the great guys, uh, one of the OGs in the city that really embraces the community. So. Hunt for sneakers never truly stop. Never forget it. Uh, 14 years old, um, it was a pair of Air Jordan 6 Lows in white and university blue. I had saved, I remember my first two paychecks for my first job to get that shoe, and the day I got it, I might have dropped a tear, you know, to be honest with you, because that's a very special pair to me. Well, like, it's, it started with the Jordan 1, obviously, but like the one that really hit me was the Bug Bunny 8. Like, Love that kick. It was so unique with the, the carpeted tongue on that. Like After that, that's when the collection really started. To, uh, I needed to start collecting them before I, they all got snatched up. Well, the thing that started it for me, Air Force One, Yeah, I'd have to say. Um, Air Force One started it for me. I, got a, I had a whole bunch of them. I ended up getting rid of them and just focusing on Jordans. But that is the great shoe. You can wear it with everything. It comes in hundreds and hundreds of colors. It's a great shoe. Christmas 2004, my girlfriend at the time, now wife, 
got me a pair of Steve Nash Air Max 90s. Opened them up, blew my mind. I wore those to the ground. And just, it started being a thing. Every time we would travel, get a shoe, get a shoe. You know, I, didn't dr I don't drink alcohol, and so my buddies would drink, and I would buy sneakers, you know? So you're like, like straight edge, but the, the addiction, yeah. like a CM Punk, his addiction was wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Your addiction is getting sneakers. Yes, my addiction was getting sneakers and getting that next sneaker. I'm always, what's the next thing you got to acquire, right? I'm done, I'm done. No, I'm not. So, yeah, there's always something. That's why they're Ooh, wow. very good one. There, there's a few on that list. There's no, there's a few on that list. Okay. Um, this is for everybody out there. Anybody has a link on a pair of Air Max Duncan 2s? Uh, size 13, right here. That's that's the go. pair. That's the pair. I've been looking for that one since they came out, and I've been unable to find them. It's a, it's a Jordan 11 low top. Um, the white with the red. It came out in 2001. I had a pair maybe seven or eight years ago, and it got a little bit beat up, and uh, I got rid of it. And now I'm really uh, kind of, I regret doing that. And I wish I get that back, and they haven't, they haven't brought it out again, and uh, I'm just waiting. One day I'll find it. I'll say this one. Royal Blue uh, Jordan 1s. I have tried so hard over the years. I got a pair a few years ago, but I would love another pair, and those were a killer to get. And they don't really, they didn't land in Calgary. So I would love to track down a pair of those. Eleanor, yeah, there's there's probably two or three of Eleanors out there, but I'd say the top Eleanor right now is my VC BB4 Shock. Um, I want that shoe so badly, the white and red one. I got the white and blue Olympics that he had, but I need that white and red so badly, because I used to play in that as a kid, and I've been hunting that down, and I haven't found it yet. The Red Octobers. To find a red, like to find the Red Octobers in a real authentic pair, you know, what are the chances of really finding it now besides spending like thousands of dollars on them? Uh, I gotta say the True Blue 3. Like I've just slept on it so many times, but it's the sickest like colorway. I got the 3 and a couple other uh, colorways, but not that, so I, that'd be the one. Well, what I want to see is this grow into a bigger community. Yeah. Like, you know, the Calgary Comic Expo 10 years ago, who, you know, where were they? They were a small group of people. I want this to blow up, and what I want next year and future years is I want to bring in more of the culture. I want to engage businesses, and then I want to educate. I want to teach people about what you look for with fakes, uh, styling your outfits. These guys over here are doing fades right now. Yeah. There's some people doing custom jewelry. I want stuff like that, and I want people to come and be like, it's not just about sneakers, it's about the culture. Uh, to keep building, keep growing, uh, this is volume one and it's already turned out to be pretty good. So volume two, volume three, four, just gonna get even better. Uh, I know next next one's gonna be the biggest one, so everyone's gotta keep their eye out on that one. That does it for us here at Sneaker Expo. Fresh Take had a good time. What a great show out here. I'm gonna go check out some sneakers. I'm gonna go check out some jerseys and other stuff here. Until next time, cheers and enjoy the day, people. Oh, that's done, by the way. Uh, yeah.